Let's talk about taxation and tourism. Ano nga ba ang tax? Did you know what is tax? Well, tax are mandatory contribution levied on individuals or corporation by a government entities, whether it is local, regional, or national. Ang tax ay ginagamit na pondo para sa mga proyekto ng gobyerno including public works and services, katulad ng mga kalsada at paaralan. Meron din programa such as Social Security and Medicare. Let's talk about tourism taxations. Adequate tourism facilities and infrastructures need to be provided for the growth of the tourism industry. Thus, the travel tax plays an important role in funding the development and maintenance of this tourism facilities and infrastructures to enhance the country's competitiveness as the major tourist destinations. However, tax hikes on hotels, restaurants, or passengers travel bump up prices of destinations, causing tourists to try away. This is turned potentially leads to less spending by tourists on tourist-related services, ultimately depressing jobs in local communities. Tourism is so sensitive to taxes because taxes will have a great impact on prices, but tourism cannot be exempt from them since it is the significant source of the revenue for the budget. Local or national government should be a part of taxes revenues to use in order to increase and improve the tourism infrastructure. Tourism taxation is a tourist encounter a large array of taxes. They may also have to pay an extra tax when they leave or visit to another country or an exit tax when they leave. They also pay a carbon or noise tax associated with the air ticket. During their stay, they encounter taxes levied on their purchases ranging from hotel rooms, restaurant meals, gifts and souvenirs, car rentals, admission to visitors attractions, and so on. However, tourist businesses such as hotels, travel agencies, and car rentals companies must pay businesses and property taxes that are also levied or non-tourist businesses, worker pay income taxes. The United Nations World Tourism Organization has identified 45 different taxes imposed on the tourists in developed and developing countries. These taxes can be implemented through general tax system or through specific tourism taxes. What are the types of tourism taxes? First, tax charged directly to tourists. Second, tax charged to tourism business. Tax charged directly to tourists. Entry taxes or visa, exit formalities and taxes, terminal departure taxes such as airports, seaports and road borders, accommodation taxes such as VAT or value added tax, sales tax, hotel levy, and bed night tax, transport, food and beverage, shopping and environmental taxes, tax charged to tourism business, fuel tax, duties on the import of tourist equipment, property taxes on the hotels and resorts, and corporation tax. What is direct taxes? A direct tax is the tax whose burden is borne by the same person on whom it is levied. The ultimate burden of taxation falls on the person on whom the tax is levied. It is based on the income and property of a person. Thus, income tax, corporation tax on company profits, property tax, capital gain tax, wealth tax, etc. are examples of direct taxes. An indirect tax is a tax collected by an intermediary from the person who bears the ultimate economic burden of the tax. This includes sale tax, value-added tax, goods and service tax, or import duty. These are the two types of indirect tax, a specific and valorant tax. A specific tax is a fixed amount of money per unit of a good service sold, such as a $5 bed tax on hotel rooms. In context, an ad valorant tax is a percentage tax based on the value added by the producer. How do we distinguish between tax and user charge? User charge differs from taxes in that users pay charges for benefits that they receive specifically. 
whereas taxes are general charges for services that benefits everyone. User charges cover some or all of the cost of the service, depending on the policy goals of the government. Some examples of user fees are highway tolls and parking garage. Meanwhile, taxes are compulsory contributions in state revenue, divided by the government on workers' income and business profits, or added to the cost of goods, services, and transactions. Some examples are general and selective sales taxes and value-added taxes, or also known as VAT. Let's talk about travel tax. So what is travel tax? The travel tax is a levy imposed by the Philippine government on individuals who are leaving the country irrespective of the place where the air ticket is issued in the form or place of payment as provided for the Presidential Decree 1183 as amended. So pursuant to Section 73 of Republic Act Number. 9593, 50% of the proceeds from travel tax collection shall accrue to the TIESA and 40% shall accrue to the Commission on Higher Education or CHED. For tourism-related educational programs and courses, the 10% shall accrue to the National Commission for Culture and Arts or NCCA. So, what is the purpose of travel tax? Let's talk about the purpose of travel tax. So the purpose of travel tax was um, the travel tax was originally imposed to curtail unnecessary foreign travels and to conserve foreign exchange. Later, the tax was used to generate much needed funds for tourism related programs and projects. And it is recognized that tourism promotion alone is not enough to attract tourists to the Philippines. Hi, this is number 10, and I do have a question for you. Do you know how much travel tax costs in the Philippines? Well, if not, I am here to enlighten you more about it. So taxable individuals may be charged the full travel tax, the standard reduced travel tax, and the privilege reduced travel tax. As you can see on the table, the full travel tax is 1,620 pesos for passengers on economy class plane tickets and 2,700 pesos when flying first class, while the standard reduced travel tax is 810 pesos for passengers flying economy class and 1,350 pesos when flying first class. And lastly, of course, for our privilege reduced travel tax, the economy class plane tickets is 300 pesos and 400 pesos when flying first class. And there is also something we call the terminal fee. And the terminal fee ranges from 50 pesos to 220 pesos per person for domestic flights and 600 pesos to 1,135 pesos per person for international flights. And of course, for our overseas Filipino workers or the OFWs, they are exempted from paying the terminal fee. As stated by Presidential Decree 1183, Philippine citizens have to pay the appropriate travel tax regardless of the place where the airline ticket is issued from or the form of payment. Who may be exempted from paying the travel tax? Overseas Filipino workers, Filipino permanent residents abroad who stay in the Philippines is less than one year. Infants, two years and below, foreign diplomatic and consular officials and members of their staff. Next one, officials, consultants, experts, and employees of the United Nations organization. Next, United States military personnel, including dependents and other U.S. nationals, with first pay or by the U.S. government or on U.S. government owned, or chartered transport facilities government transport request for a plane ticket or certification from the U.S. Embassy that the fare is paid from the U.S. government funds. 
crew members of airplanes flying international routes, Filipino permanent residents abroad who stay in the Philippines is less than one year. These are also exempted from paying the travel tax. Philippine Foreign Service personality officially assigned abroad and their dependents. Their requirements is certification from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Officials and employees of the Philippine government traveling on official business excluding government-owned and controlled corporations and they need a certified true copy of travel authority or travel order from the department secretary concerned to the effect that such officials or employees are traveling on official business. Grantees of foreign government funded trips Proof that travel funded or provided by foreign government is their requirement. Bonafide students with approved scholarship by appropriate government agency. Personnel of multinational companies with regional headquarters but not engaged in business in the Philippines. And lastly, those authorized by the President of the Republic of the Philippines for reasons of national interest. I'm number one, and I'm going to answer the questions of who can avail the standard reduced travel tax and how much is the standard reduced travel tax. For those who can avail the standard reduced travel tax, first ones are minors from two years and one day to 12th birthday on the date of the exact travel. Second ones are accredited Filipino journalists whose travel is in pursuit of journalistic assignments. And lastly are those authorized by the President of the Republic of the Philippines for reasons of national interests. So how much is the reduced travel tax? So for the economy class, it is exactly 810 pesos and for the first class is 1,350 pesos. Good day everyone, this is number 7 and I will be answering the question, who may avail of the privileged reduced travel tax? And what are the requirements? But take note that this kind of privilege is not for everyone. This is just for the people who are traveling to the OFW's work site. So first here we have a legitimate spouse of an overseas Filipino worker. And these are the requirements. Next is unmarried children of an OFW whether they are legitimate or illegitimate as long as they belong to the age of 21 years below and these are the requirements and last is children of OFWs with disabilities even above 21 years of age and these are their requirements Today, I'm going to answer the question, how can I pay my travel tax in the Philippines online? This is the online travel tax payment system. First, visit www.traveltax.chiesa.gov.ph. The second step is, select the type of travel tax you wish to pay. For example, First class, economy, and business class. The third step is to create a one-time account by providing your email address or your passport number. The last step would be to enter your ticket number, mobile number, the departure date, and of course the country of the destination. 